So we're here in Alberta at the uh, Economic Education Association of Alberta's conference and we're with uh, Dr. Patrick Moore, the co-founder of Greenpeace. Uh, Dr. Moore, thank you for being with us. Very nice to be here. Uh, Dr. Moore, you gave a, a fantastic presentation last night. Could you just give us just a quick recap of why you decided to leave Greenpeace and what problems you see with the Green Movement today? Well, the, the sort of overarching reason I left Greenpeace it was after 15 years, we'd begun with a fairly humanitarian orientation to save humanity from all-out nuclear war. That was our, our founding campaign against nuclear testing as a symbol of the opposition to nuclear war. And so we wanted to save civilization. We didn't want to destroy it. And by the time I left Greenpeace, it had drifted into a, a situation where all I had left was the green and had kind of dropped the peace, which was the human side of the situation and now they were characterizing people as the enemies of the earth the human species as the enemies of nature as if we were the only evil species of course all the other species were good and 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 we were bad because we were destroying them as if we were separate from the rest of life when in fact we're part of life or part of nature so to make us seem to be separate from nature and actually anti-nature is really a, a, a terrible thing especially to teach our young people and the majority of our synthetic pharmaceuticals, our medicines, are based on chlorine chemistry precisely because it's toxic to bacteria and that has saved millions and millions, hundreds of millions of lives through the time that we have learned to use chlorine as an antibacterial agent. Greenpeace has this naive vision of a world with no toxics, like maybe they want to eliminate uh, poisonous snakes too. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but there's lots of toxic in nat toxics in nature. Nature is full of toxics. All plants make toxic materials to fend off insects and fungus, for example. And they just don't even pay any attention to these realities of nature. Yes. Very good. And so uh, there's a lot of talk now in the United States about this Green New Deal. Uh, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to look at that, but what are your thoughts? Are, is this a good idea or are we in trouble or what's the plan? Well, it's a recipe for mass suicide. Uh, it's just quite amazing that someone that is in government, actually elected to the government of the United States of America, would propose that we eliminate all fossil fuels in 12 years. <laughs> this would basically result, if we did it on a global level, it would result in the decimation of the human population from seven odd billion down to who knows how few people. I mean, it would, it would basically begin a process of cannibalization amongst the human species because the food could not be delivered to the stores in the middle of the cities anymore. How would this, even just that one point, the, the point that bothers me the most is if you eliminated fossil fuels, every tree in the world would be cut for fuel. There's no other source of heating and cooking once you eliminate fossil fuels. You can use animal dung if there were any animals left, but there, the animals would all die too because, well, first off, they would all get eaten, and any that survived would be, have to go wild because there'd be nobody left to look after them. I mean, it's the most ridiculous scenario I've ever heard because people recognize when something is preposterous, and I think that's the best word for it. Well, the best word for it is actually mass suicidal. But why would anyone vote for something that was going to result in the death of nearly all humans on Earth? How do they get these ideas in their head that we could eliminate fossil fuels? Or is it just fake? Are they just faking in order to... Do, are, are, do they really think that a lot of people will support that? That a lot of people will think, oh no, I don't really need my car for the next 10 years. Uh, you know, I don't need to have fossil fuels, I don't okay. need to heat my house, I don't need electricity. What, what, where are these fast trains that she's proposing to replace airplanes going to get their electricity? Does she think that you just have to hook them up to the wires that are hanging in the air? Doesn't she know that you have to first put electricity into the wires? You know, so it's nuts. Well, one of my missions is to turn on its head the idea that carbon dioxide is a pollutant and somehow dangerous when in fact it is the most important nutrient for all life on Earth 
and without it, this would be a dead planet. So I say not only is carbon dioxide good, it is essential, and it's a good thing that we are putting some more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because it was running low before we came along. CO2, we know its benefits for plants, but it is a, a known greenhouse gas, and we're pumping too much of it in, leading to global warming. Well, actually, it may be a known greenhouse gas, but it's not known how strong it is in terms of changing the Earth's temperature. And so far in this century, there has been zero warming from a statistically significant basis, and the UK Met Office says so, yet one-third of all human CO2 emissions have been put into the atmosphere in the last 18 years. So it doesn't look like a lockstep causal relationship between increasing CO2 and warming of the Earth. Are you seriously suggesting we should be pumping more stuff in, polluting the earth more, building more coal-fired power stations just so we can make sure that the CO2 levels are good? No, I'm not, because we're putting plenty of CO2 into the atmosphere. We don't need to do it this quickly, but if we bring it up to a higher level than it is today, we will get immediately an increase in the growth of crops and trees, which is not a bad thing. If we actually achieve net zero, at least 50% of the population would die of hunger, and disease. No doubt about it, because just, just one thing, which is nitrogen-based fertilizer, at least 50% of the population depends on nitrogen fertilizer for its existence today. There's no doubt about that. And there's people trying to ban it. And it, Netherlands and Sri Lanka have already made these kind of moves. And uh, so, so it's, it, it is truly a, a death wish in disguise, in, and the disguise is to save the earth. The climate crisis is about human security, economic security, environmental security, national security, and the very life of the planet. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. The fourth industrial revolution offers us risks such as COVID, a high inflation, climate change, exploitation of nature, global warming, and deep nuclear extinction. 